Okay, welcome back to the channel. Now today we're going to look at something called hidden quadratics. So what is it? Now if you look at these equations that we have here, they might not look like quadratics at the moment, but what we have got to be able to spot is that we can change these into quadratics. So just one thing to pick up on straight away is this. This here is x to the power of 6 and this is x to the power of 3. Notice that 3 is exactly half of 6. Same over here, a fifth, that's exactly half of 2 fifths. And over here, you've got a power of x, and this is a power of 2x, so again, half. And then over here, what we've got to be able to spot is this. Well, this here is x to the power of 1, and then because this is square root of x, square root of x can be written as x to the half. So again, what we've now got is a power of 1 and a power of a half, and obviously that's exactly half of 1. And now every time you see this, you can turn it into a quadratic. And so this is how we do it. Now, because we've got x to the power of 6, we can kind of rewrite that as this. We can write that as x cubed to the power of 2. because the 3 times 2 will give me 6 anyway. So this is equivalent to x to the power of 6. Now once we've done that, we can go with this and say, let x to the power of 3 equal some random letter. I'm just going to call it capital A for now. So what that means is here, I can put a squared plus, that would be 8a, and then plus 7 equals 0. And now what we've got is a quadratic. So we go and factorize it. So that would be a and a, and that would be plus seven plus one. So over here we can say a is equal to minus seven, and over here a is equal to minus one. Now you might think it's finished. Oh, we've solved it, we've got answers. But not quite, because our original equation had x's in it. So what we need is to give an answer where it has x equals something. Now, we said a is exactly the same as x cubed. So we can say now that x cubed is minus 7 and x cubed is minus 1. And now to get answers for x, all we need to do is cube root our answers here. So x is then equal to cube root of minus 7 and cube root of minus 1. And that's that one done. Now we're going to do the same with the next one. So we need to start by changing this here into x to the power of one fifth squared because two times one fifth will give me two fifths. So it's perfectly equivalent. And then minus seven x to the power of a fifth plus three equals zero. And now we'll go and choose uh, another letter. So let's say we're gonna let x to the power of one fifth equal, we'll go with capital B this time. So this can be written as 2b squared minus 7b plus 3 equals 0. And then we can look at factorizing again. So I think 2b and b, and that would be 3, 1, minus, and minus. There it is, factorized. So then we'll have b is equal to a half, and b is equal to 3. But remember, we need to give answers that are x equals something. But we said b is the same as x to the fifth, so x to the fifth is equal to a half, and x to the fifth is equal to three. And now to get rid of this fifth, what do we need to do? Apply a power of five. So it's gonna be a half to the power of five, and uh, x would equal three to the power of five. So I think that's one over, I think 32, I think for this one. And then x should be equal to, what is this, 27, 81, I think, 243, probably. So double check that, 3 to the power of 5, make sure it is that. And then going on to the next one. So same thing, we need to start by rewriting this. We can write it as 2 to the x, and then squared. Because remember, if you're multiplying those, x times 2 is 2x, so it's the same thing. And then we can write the rest in exactly the same. Okay, what should we do now? We need to pick another letter. So we'll say let 
2 to the x equal, I'm going to go with capital P this time. So we'll say that's P squared minus 10P plus 16 equals 0. And then look to factorize again. So we'll have, uh, I think, minus, in minus 2 this time equals 0. So P is 8 and P is 2. And then remember, that means 2 to the x is equal to 8 and 2 to the x is equal to 2. So 2 to the power of something is 8. Well, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. And again, 2 to the power of something is 2. Well, 2 to the power of 1 has got to be 2. OK, so there we go. Those are the first three done. Just one more to go with over here. Maybe I'll rub this out and we can use a bit of space here to solve that. So I'll just get rid of this. So, with that one then, um, we'll need to begin by rewriting this x to the power of 1. We can write it as x to the power of a half squared, and then minus 8x to the half plus 12 equals 0. And that's because 2 times a half is going to give me 1. Then, we can pick a random letter again, and we'll say let x to the half equal, we'll go with q this time. So we can go q squared minus 8q. Uh, plus 12 equals 0. And then we look to factorise. So that would be Q and Q. And I think that's minus 6 minus 2 this time. Yes. So that means Q is equal to 6. Q is equal to 2. But that means X to the half is equal to 6. And X to the half is equal to 2. So to get rid of this X to the half, we'll need to square. So we're going to have x is equal to, well, 6 squared, so 36. And x is equal to 2 squared, which is going to be 4. And there we go. So that there is how we can solve these equations here, which are actually just hidden quadratics. So what have you got to look out for again? Look out for where the powers are exactly double of each other. And then you know that you can rewrite the bigger power like we did there and then select a random letter substitute it in turn it into a quadratic and go and solve that's it hopefully it all makes sense